How do you manually fly a drone so that you can create a 3D model of a subject that you're capturing? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to do that. I'm also gonna show you a bunch of tips, extra things you can do, and also some options in terms of drones you can buy that help alleviate some of those issues. So in today's video, I'm gonna be using the Zero Zero Robotics Falcon Mini, which is a new drone that they're coming out with to manually fly and capture some images. The reason why I've chosen this drone is because specifically it does not have the ability to either automate the missions so you cannot have the drone automatically fly so you have to manually fly and capture the images and it also does not include any photo metadata that allows the photogrammetry engines to be able to determine scale or size so this entirely just relies on looking at an image so in today's video i'm going to show you just how you fly a drone like this with basically fully manual to capture the best quality 3d models some other things about this drone too is it does not have a time shots feature which means that you have to manually go through and click every single image so just keep that in mind as well when you're capturing your subject this is going to be a very intensive task normally if you did not want to spend an hour manually flying the drone you'd get a subscription to a service like waypoint map and then you would be able to go through and automate this unlike your DJI drones. So that way you're not worried about actually having to manually fly this. But if you have no choice, say you bought a drone kind of like this, that is not super high end, you can go through and manually still capture models and images, especially if you're looking at maybe dipping into this and offering this in terms of your clients. So if you're unfamiliar with how 3D modeling works on these kind of drones, it's based on something called photogrammetry. And photogrammetry allows you, once you capture multiple images, to kind of triangulate each point based off of those images so that you can create an accurate or semi-accurate, at least to scale model of a subject based on a number of images. So you're trying to capture at least three or so images of each certain point which may sound like a lot of work, but in reality, if you do a couple circles around a building, you're going to capture most, if not all of the detail necessary, long as it's visible. You know, you have overhangs and stuff like that. That's not gonna work so well, but for the purpose of today's video, we're going, I'm gonna jump into it and let's just show you kind of my thought process. I'm gonna fly around a community center that's local to me, and I'm going to kind of explain the process of what I'm doing, and then we'll look in and we'll jump into the final results, see what the quality looks like compared to an automated mission, and also some other considerations you should have as well. So let's talk a little bit about overlap and what is overlap in terms of photogrammetry. It is the amount that each image that you capture matches the next one. So what you're basically doing is you're trying to take a bunch of images and each of those images you're trying to triangulate. So you have a point here, you've moved a little bit, then you look at that same point, then you look at that same point, And after enough images, you can kind of determine where that point is in 3D space. So, at least the software does, you're not doing that. But the point is, each of these images has a consistent amount that they are changing. They're not really changing by a whole lot. This is roughly what you would call about like an 80%, I think probably closer to an 85%. And what you're trying to aim for is about an 85% overlap. And that means that between all these images, not a lot is changing, but you have a lot of data in between. So that's the point of overlap is just whenever you capture your images, try to make sure that they are consistently staying about the same amount of distance and the same amount of change in each one. And this will help you produce much better, higher quality models when you're manually doing this. Now, when it comes to actually capturing the building, you have a lot of different things that you need to keep in mind. So this is like an overhead, very jank view of a building. As you can see, we have basically just the building in blue and a bunch of different lines here, and I'll kind of explain in a second. So what I found in my experience, at least when doing this manually, and even when I start flight planning, like in Waypoint Map, for example, what I will do is I will have the drone fly in a rather large circle. And what this circle does is it allows the drone itself to kind of keep the whole building in the picture. And what I mean by the whole building, I mean, when you take these pictures, you notice that the whole building is included or the whole subject is included in your picture. If for example, I was zoomed in super close and maybe I was flying a little too close and I was only getting like a little bit of the building, or maybe I had the gimbal too far down and I was not getting enough of the building. What you're trying to do is you're trying to keep the whole building included in your image. So that means that if you're at that point where you're just getting you know something like this you need to fly a little bit farther away now what you'll notice also is this specific site also has some restrictions so there's a lot of trees around the edge here as you notice so 
even when I'm flying relatively close, you can still see that the trees now are starting to obfuscate the building itself. So what you're trying to do is trying to fly at a couple different heights and altitudes, at least in circles in my experience, to go through and capture as much differing data as you can. So for example, having kind of a circle at around this height, and then maybe I would fly up a little bit higher, tilt the gimbal down a little bit so that I can still keep the whole building in view. And then I you would fly around in another circle and maybe I would do that as well. Now, as you may also notice, there is something here, which is an overhang. If you can get down low enough that you can capture a couple different angles of that overhang, you'll be doing really good. However, also keep in mind that if you are, again, not really keeping the whole subject in view, which is kind of the problem down here is, even if I had the drone down here looking at this building, there are a lot of things uh, obfuscating the whole building. And whether or not, yes, I might be able to, in theory, get the whole image in view, if half the building or more is starting to be covered up by trees, in this case, if the drone was above, uh, basically ground level down here, all these trees would start covering up the building, and it would make it really hard to have consistent overlap. So that is also the other issue is you might not be able to get the detail that's underneath this overhang unless you spend a lot of time trying to capture a lot of images. I think the you know return on investment or at least your time as looking at it as an investment is really not worth it in my opinion. So from that let's actually talk about the flight plan. So again couple large circles, differing heights, differing views. And then I also, in this case, am going to do something where I basically fly along the edge of each of these walls. And I'm going to look down and make sure that I keep a view directly looking down on the building as I fly along it. So now that we've captured all these images, I'm going to go through and throw these in a 3D modeling software called Aerial Model. And from that, we're going to look at the final results and compare it to something that is fully automated, like a fully automated mission like Waypoint Map, and just see the improvement in quality. So let's jump over there at real quick. So real quick, I just want to show you the difference between something I captured on the DJI Mini 4 Pro with an automated mission planning. I used an automated mission from Waypoint Map. I did basically what I described in this video. I just did a couple of concentric circles. I changed them at differing heights. And I also flew along the building and basically repeated the same flight plan that I'm going to emulate with the Zero Zero Robotics Falcon Mini. As you can see, this is, while it's not the best, if I bump up the quality real quick, it is a rather decent model and it does show you a lot. Now this was captured in winter so the trees aren't the best, but you can very clearly see all the little bit of details here, which ends up looking really good. Now obviously for the overhangs, as I mentioned, you're not going to capture a lot of detail below an overhang, but between and besides all that, it looks really good. Now when I jump over to the Zero Zero Robotics Falcon Mini, it's not going to look as good right away. Also, you'll notice very quickly that this is a little weird, as in that it's tilted, it's kind of got, I want to say it's a lower quality, it's a lower detail, so what gives? Well, there's a number of things to keep in mind here. One, the images on the DJI Mini 4 Pro are actually, when, they, when, the, when the camera takes the picture, it saves a bunch of detail about that picture, like the location, the inclination of the gimbal, stuff like that. So with that information, the software here can actually take that and actually determine a lot more details about the size of things. So for example, you can see here, this is going to roughly be about 23 meters, which is actually relatively pretty close to what the actual size of that location is. Versus if we repeat the same process over here, and I might have to even zoom out in order to get something similar, you'll notice that this is not even a meter, which doesn't quite make sense. So depending on the type of drone that you have, if you do not have that information present in the camera, it becomes very hard for the pi pictures to actually be oriented or the model to be oriented properly. Because, you know, obviously the drone's looking down, it's got a certain point, you can really easily figure out where and what you're looking at and the kind of the ground level versus this, you're just basically throwing in a bunch of different pictures and you don't quite know a lot of information about what you're looking at. So this is not ideal if you wanted to go through and basically do this for a 3D model. Maybe you wanted to 3D print this for a client or something. I would highly recommend that you get a drone that at least can automate your flight plans 
and at least a drone that has the ability to store that metadata on the drone itself, on the drone imagery or the pictures themselves. So in this case, this is doable. You could print this and get a relatively decent sized model. Um, it will be pretty, I guess it will be okay, but it will be basically a low poly version versus if you were to do something like this, this is ultimately very high detail. So even in this case, I think you could offer this to a client. It might not be the absolute best, but at least it looks very good. So at least it looks very good in the context of the quality of drone and the price range that you've got. So that concludes at least this direct comparison. Again, I would highly recommend that you get a drone that either supports automated mission planning so you don't have to manually go through and capture these images, or also at least one that has the ability to store that metadata directly on the imagery because this is just a lot of work in post to go through and orient this properly. And then also you just have a lot of details that aren't getting brought out. So thank you very much for watching. Check out my upcoming Mavic 4 review and I will see you guys later. Goodbye.